do you know that recently we've discovered that there, your brain has its own microbiome? We've got bacteria that grow naturally and healthily in our brain. Wow. And it's 20% of the same bacteria that's in our gut. It's actually found in our brain. So they're connected. We believe so. Because we used to, we used to, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but we used to treat like Alzheimer's and dementia as focusing on the brain, correct? Like, let's look at the brain and see what's wrong or what's off and yeah. try to treat the brain. Yeah. Versus now you're saying, well, it's the, it's the gut, it's the whole body that's connected to the brain. So we have to look at everything. And we're beginning to sort of ask new questions. Uh, about what might be some of the contributing factors, not just the tiny little plaques in Alzheimer's disease. Because by the way, we've actually made a little bit of progress in that area, but after billions and billions of dollars, like we haven't made enough. Really? Right? I mean, if you think about it, like if you wanted return on investment, you would not actually call Alzheimer's research to be good because for the bang for the buck that we put in there, we're actually getting very little bang. And we, we still don't know how to reverse Alzheimer's or prevent it, I guess, or? Not, not really, but, but, but I'll tell you that, that what I'm excited by is this idea that maybe there uh, could, this is the, the theory, yeah, yeah. could there be some bad bacteria or the absence of some good bacteria um, in your mouth even, okay, uh, or the lower gut that actually is a trigger for Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. Wow. You know, by the way, there is a, there is a bacteria, a probiotic that's been researched to show that it can actually um, uh, really slow down the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. It's called Lactobacillus plantarum, and it's a probiotic called PS128. And, you know, it's, it's surprising that a probiotic could have such a profound effect on the brain. What is that called again? PS, like Paul and Sam, 128, and the actual bacteria is called Lactobacillus plantarum. Okay, so I'm just sharing with you discoveries, okay, uh, w w about the brain. And, and so what I got interested in terms of longevity, and I'm not a neuroscientist and I'm not a, a dementia specialist, but I am somebody that is sort of really good at framing out um, if there's a connection between gut and brain, maybe we should be looking at the connection between gut and longevity. Interesting. And that's where some of the really exciting new stuff is coming out as well. And so what is the main things that you've been able to observe then about the gut and how it relates to people that live over 100? So first of all, people who live to 100 are called centenarians, right? Cent like 100. Um, and we think that if you could live to 100, like that's 100 candles on your birthday cake. Like it's a big that's, deal. That's a big deal. Right. That's a big, that's the big birthday. That is. All right. Now I have to tell you, my great uncle lived to 104. Wow. Okay. I was at his 100 Come on. birthday party and I, I saw 100 candles on his cake. That's impressive. Yeah. So I, I, I know it can happen in my own family. Did he have the energy to blow all the candles out? Not only did he have the energy to blow the candles out, he planned the party himself. Wow. Okay. He invited the guest list. He actually, I mean, he, he made the guest list. He planned the meal. You know, he hosted the thing. Uh, so, so Pretty it's cool. possible. Yeah. Okay. Now, most people think that, you know, living to 100 would be like a crapshoot, a long shot. Like, oh, if I could, in a healthy way, uh, live to 100 would be great. But, you know, because I've been doing some research on this. It turns out today, you know how many people live are 100 years old now? I think you said it was close to a million or over a million. Today, there are 722,000 people who are centenarians living in the world. Um, you know, almost a quarter of, three quarters of a million of people that are 100. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people, a lot more than most people suspect. And what that means is that it is possible to actually get to there, which means that we can begin to study these people. And that's what, where, like, I think some of the most exciting and um, provocative stuff actually is right. So and people are studying their gut bacteria. Yeah, and really? now we can just now we can actually study the poop. Wow, and the microbiome of people who are a hundred and older. So centenarians are people who live to a hundred, but it turns out that there's something called a super centenarian or an old a super ager, and these are people that live to 114, 115 years old. All right, um, and like they're really interesting. So. A research study was done out of Italy, 
looking at people across the lifespan from young adulthood, you know, like 20 to 40, 40 to 70, 70 to 90, 90 to 100, and, and, then, and then like the super agers, okay, like 100 to 115 or 114. And in today's technology, all right, like, look, believe me, I, I think that um, wearables are great. I think that, you know, um, biohacking devices are quite amazing, but I think it's even more amazing that we can actually study the yeah. gut microbiome of like these super agers. Sure. So the question is, is there something in the gut microbiome in super agers, 100 and above, that pop out as important? It's not present in people who don't live that, that long. Okay. It turns out uh, there are four bacteria that are standouts in people that live to 100 and beyond. Does that mean there are four bacteria in people that live 100 beyond in their, their gut bacteria that people under 100 don't have? They have more of it, gotcha. They have more of it. Like, they're, like in, for them, it really stands out as, as a super big spike. Okay. These four bacteria, you wanna hear about them? Yes. All right, they've got names that one of the names you might have heard of, I think we talked about it in my last time I was on a podcast, but there is four bacteria. One of them is called Odorobacter. Okay. O Odorobacter? Odorobacter. Okay. okay. One of them is called Oscillobacter. Um, one of them is called Kristin, uh, Kristin uh, Sinella. And then the fourth one is our old friend Acromancia. Okay. And we've talked about acromancy before, okay. um, uh, which, which, you know, uh, it's, it's sort of been making the rounds as a important gut bacteria. Um, I think the last time I was here, I was telling you that there have been discoveries that if you have cancer and you're on immunotherapy, which, which jacks up your own immune system to attack the cancer, it's not chemo. It's one of the most natural ways of approaching cancer. It's, re it's re resulting in complete responses, meaning stage four to stage zero. Okay. Wow. Um, turns out acromancia, having this gut bacteria may wind up being one of the critical pieces that you have to have to connect the dots to, for that to happen. Okay. To really get a great response. To help you reverse cancer. Yeah. Help your own immune system. Reverse cancer. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Gut bacteria talks to your immune system. 70% of your immune system lives in your gut. All right. Uh, and so you've got the right bacteria they know how to speak the uh, the right language to your immune system to tell it to do what it's supposed to do. 70% of your immune system lives in the gut. Yeah, exactly. Where's the other 30%? Uh, scattered in different tissues in your body. Really? Wow. But you know, by the way, you know where the immune system lives in the gut? It's actually in the wall of the gut. Think of your gut as a garden hose. Cut that garden hose open and look in the, look in the cross section. There's a little empty stuff in the middle. That's where the bacteria live. That's where your immune system is. Your immune system lives in the wall uh -huh. of the of the garden hose, inside the wall. And the bacteria. And the bacteria is... live inside the inside the inside the cavity of the garden wow. hose. Wow! And they talk to each other like college students um, shouting at each other through a cheap wall in a dorm room. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more inspiring clips like this, make sure to click right here to subscribe and click right here to watch that next video that is specific to support you in your life.